We're back with our brew with a blue here on the blue room. I am getting used to saying that now. It was a bit of a tongue twister at first, Sarah. <laughs> but I'm there now. I've got it. You've done well can... there. Yeah, and I know we're into week three of these now, so you know I've just about got it. I feel like my mouth's been trained enough to be able to say it. I've, I've had enough practice saying it, but uh, we are back. Uh, happy Easter Monday to everybody here, and as you can see, uh, Sarah Halpin joins me. Uh, Sarah, how are you? Are you well? You, you've got your brew. You are I've a brew. I've got my brew. I don't Tick- mess about, Matt. Ticking all the boxes for, for this show, but how are you doing? Are you okay? Do you know what? Um, I'm actually doing okay, mate, to be honest. Considering the circumstances, it's a, it's a tough time for everyone and a very strange time for everyone. Um, but I know we were just saying before then, you know, there's there's people out there, unfortunately, who've, who've re- really in the midst of it, who've either got it or, you know, know people who have and stuff. So in that sense, I'm very lucky. I'm by myself, but my family are well, my friends are well, and Plenty of meditation, doing them Joe Wicks YouTube videos, mate. Do you know what? I mean? so, <laughs> Do you know what? Just, go on. I was just gonna say we like because because this is works for the NHS. They've got like access to this one. It's called like HIT, I think. It's like H double I T. Yes. And, like, we've, been, we've been doing them in like the living room, and like the people who live below us are thinking, "What on earth is going on up there?" <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> Yeah, yesterday I heard upstairs doing the same. So I was thinking, what on earth's going on? I was like, oh, they're obviously doing a, a video or something like that. So yeah. every, everyone who lives in a flat's just getting bombarded by the people <laughs> above them, I imagine, with all these videos going on. That's literally it, though. That's exactly what I've been doing. The, the hit, I think, is it like high intensity interval training? That's, training, that's the yeah, one. Because yeah. I was like, I need to know what this means, but. That's what I've been doing as well. So there's all these star jumps and yeah. things, and exactly the same. I'm thinking because I live, as you know, in like an old house. The floorboards are going and stuff. And I'm thinking, <laughs> the hell, I feel worse for doing this. You know, the, the like Jurassic Park and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, it's good. You, you you feel sometimes a bit funny doing them, but once you get into the swing of it, mm-hmm. like you can't stress enough the importance of getting them endorphins pumping and stuff like that to keep yourself feeling good at these times so look if anything else hopefully i'll come out of this a little bit a little bit lighter (laughs) a little bit healthier and um yeah just trying to keep positive mate missing the football missing everton and and you know all you guys as well very much i think it's we've sort of spoken quite a lot on, on on these videos about things that might carry on after this and thing you know things to become like socially acceptable during the lockdown that they might carry on and, and i think what you said there about the videos is one that i hope people do sort of do a little bit more and might become normalized because because like you said like when we first started doing them like i've got blinds here out into the road and i was like oh we've got to shut the blinds to make sure that no no one sees me you know jumping around like a dickhead in my living room <laughs> but, but now it's sort of a case of oh well I, i'm not bothered and i think what while it's like you said it's tough times for everyone everyone's you know you know there's a lot of people out there struggling you sort of hope that the good things that are happening because of this, like, you know, exercising at home, like doing a lot more remote stuff, you know, that, that sort of thing, could hopefully carry on and make the world a bit of a better place when we do all, you know, stream out of our houses. Yeah, 100%. I think certainly I'm definitely going to try and maintain doing more exercise and mindfulness and taking that time for self-care. And, you know, so often in life, how, how often are we all saying oh, I'd love to do that, but I don't have the time. I wish I could do that, but I don't have the time. Yeah. And yes, it's in a circumstance and a situation that nobody would ever have wished for. But all of a sudden, a lot of us have got time, you know, can't go to work for like whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah, really use that time to... And although, you know, a lot of us can't be physically with our friends, our loved ones, you know, we've got that time to pick up the phone, to FaceTime, to, yeah. to really reach out. And I've found that... You know, some days I'm I'm less interactive than others because some days I need to shut off from from the news and from everything else and just chill out. But you know, I've I have reached out and spoke to more people that I haven't spoken to for maybe a couple of years even. Yeah. That, you know, um, and and that's a really lovely thing. So yeah, hopefully that sort of kind of thing, exercise, staying in touch more with people, um, and just being a bit kinder. And I found like. If I get myself, I can get into a bad mood if I see all the negative stuff on Twitter, people being, you know, idiots, people being mm. selfish, but trying to look at all the lovely stuff and kind stuff and nice stuff people are doing. That's the stuff that proper puts a smile on my face and yeah. and keeps me going. And yeah, so let's hope everyone's a little bit kinder and a little bit healthier after this as well. <laughs> <laughs> do, you find that, do you find that easy to switch off from Twitter? Because, I, I, you know, obviously you've got like a massive following on there now. You know, you're very interactive and that sort of thing. You know, whenever I put a video out, you know, I tend to tag people in the pictures. I, I, always, I always tag you in them as well. Is 
Because I imagine when you go on your notifications, you've, you've got a lot to scroll through. Did you find that difficult to sort of switch off from that and, and get that balance right, like you said, between, you know, going on there, maybe interacting with Blues, looking at a few, you know, nostalgic videos of everything goals from, from this time of year and seeing the BBC, you know, X amount of people have died today. Yeah, it, it is tough because, as you say, you know, social media is such a huge part of what we do. Um, and, you know, people probably get sick of me talking about it. I'm always very open about my mental health issues as well. So I do often find even before all this has happened, social media and notifications and stuff, I never, ever want people to think I'm ignorant, but sometimes I yeah. just get overwhelmed and I don't always action things as much as I should. But I love talk, as as we both know, there is some, you occasionally get some horrible people on there as well. It's yeah. such as life. But there's so many boss blues on there and just people that I love interacting with and, even if I'm not getting back, I do love to read the the messages and like that always puts a smile on my face. But yeah, I guess I have tried to step back a little bit just because of there's that balance, isn't there? You, you see yeah. nice things, but then you see like um, videos that are, are, are put out there to try and cause a bit of hysteria and, and negativity. And obviously people are stuck in. Um, so people maybe are a little bit more negative, a little bit more angry, looking for it, looking for a fight. Yeah. So I find like some days I don't really bother with it at all, and then I might have a day where I think, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit now. I'm maybe gonna do a video, read through some comments, chat to a couple of blues. But yeah, everything in life is about balance. I've got my little yin and yang tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to learn. How, how hypocritical am I? Like, yeah. Probably like one of the most unbalanced people, you know, man. You know <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm striving. I'm striving for that. So yeah. I, I was gonna say, I was gonna say about your tattoos. Have you been looking up how to do them at home yourself? Because I imagine you're getting, getting, gonna get the itch for another one. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna start doing them with bamboo, and I'm gonna etch in the days of lockdown. Like maybe by the time that uh, yeah. this is out, I'll have all this arm done with like the, <laughs> crossing them off. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, uh, one of the one of the themes that we've uh, been speaking about on these videos is you know how much you, you're missing the football and you know if, if not at all. And <clears throat> speaking to to Mark Mosey on, on Friday, and he was sort of saying that he's been so involved in work and that sort of thing that he's not really been bothered about it yet. Um, he's not really getting that year into go the game, but when it all starts, going to expect it to kick off. And I think when when I sort of knew you were coming on, I was thinking about what you're going to speak about and. I think of all the people we've had on, I imagine for you it's probably the most difficult to escape because, you know, look, look at everyone who can see you on camera now. There's a signed John Stone shirt behind one shoulder. There's another Everton thing behind another shoulder. I think people people will know by now your house is full of Everton memorabilia. You are a stone throw away from the ground. You yeah. do great, you know, you do great work with the football club and, and you know, you travel with the with the girls everywhere. Um, are, are, are you really missing it now or, or are you enjoying that break from it? Are you really missing it? I'm really, really missing it, Matt. I'm really missing it. Um, as you know, like, God, I'm, I'm just, my whole life is sort of surrounded by Everton physically, like, emotionally, everything. Like, it's, it runs through my life so strong. And as you said, you know, the girls especially, I think, well, going to Goodison Park on a match day, I think, you know, and the fact that we just got Ancelotti in, there was a sort of feel-good factor coming back as well and really enjoying being back at Goodison. And, um, you know, more than anything, though, probably travelling home and away with the girls, as you said, and just missing them as well and the squad and the team because um, it's such a great group of people. And that's something that I really just just love the whole experience of. It's, it's work, but it's not. I just pinch myself. Yeah. Time I'm away with them it's a dream come true for me and you know I'm, I'm pleased to say though like we've got such a good group of, of like the staff and everything um I've been chatting to them uh the couple of the girls have FaceTimed me a lot of them have messaged me to just see how I am and that just shows a lot about the club um I think and and the team we've got but yeah I, it, it's to make me think I'm never going to take anything for granted again like you know when there's long journeys or when we've had a fixture change, then it's a drab, <laughs> you know, one one like or nil yeah. nil or something like the 80th minute. I, I'm never going to take it for granted ever again. I can promise that because I am half missing it, mate. <laughs> See, you, you say that now, but I, I've, I've been saying the same thing. But I know if if I'm at Goodison Park and it's 80 minutes and it's nil nil against someone like Newcastle home and, <laughs> and, Tom, and Tom Davis kicks the ball out of play, <laughs> you think. You, 
you can bet I'm standing up and going mental. But you know, the, I think I think we all say this now. It's like when we look ahead to a new season and we say, this season we need a lot of patience. It's going to be a transition. There's going to be new players. And then as soon as we draw, as soon as we draw a home to someone half decent, everyone's like, oh, this fella's terrible. Get rid of this player. This manager, get, get this manager out. I feel like it's probably going to be a similar sort of thing. That's it. And it's like, we're all like, oh, this won't change us. And then we'll just remember that we are Everton. And we're going to have a whinge. No, it's, um, it's, you know, I'll miss hearing people groaning and whinging when, when Tom Davis <laughs> misplaces a pass. Or, you know what I mean? It's it's things like that. that I mean, oh, shut up. But no, it's... Uh, it, it, it just, I do just miss everything about it. Match day, I, I, I feel like you know on Father Ted, uh, Mrs. Doyle, where she's like, some of us <laughs> like the misery. <laughs> I feel like that. I'm, miss, I'm missing the misery. Do you know what I mean? Oh. So, uh, no, the sooner it's, but, but obviously, oh sorry, I'm knocking my camera in. Yeah. The sooner that it's back, the better. But obviously, um, it, it's got to be done safely. We've got to make yeah. sure everything's. We can't just rush it back and then. You know, it's still blowing my mind, to be honest with you, Matt, that you, you looked at the, there was the, the match on here. I mean, you know where I live. I saw there was thousands of like people from a city that had been locked down walking past my window just a few, you know, in a matter of days before uh, it all kind of broke, broke free. So we've got to make sure that nothing like that happens and we can't have football back or anything sooner than it's safe to be. But gosh... It can't come <laughs> soon enough, mate. It really can't. Uh, you said you've been speaking to, to a lot of the, the girls and stuff there as well. And, you know, I think we sort of look at the footballers and see the stuff the club are putting out on social media and we sort of say, oh, we, you know, it's great. And they all seem to be dealing with it really well, you know, you know, especially, you know, the lads have all got plush homes. They're doing exercises on the stairs <laughs> with the dogs and all that sort of stuff. But I imagine for, for you know, for, for both the teams, really, that, that that dressing room environment and seeing sort of the mates and the teammates every day is, is probably something they're all yearning for now. I mean, have you spoke to any of the girls about that? Are they are they missing being at Finch Farm every day and and those journeys to the away games and you know you know especially with the, the new stadium being open recently as well? It, it feels like an absolute nightmare time for them to to have the, the season curtailed. Yeah, you're completely spot on. I mean, as you know, Walton Hall Park. You know, we've got a really good attendance there for the first match, um, and we had a huge cup game coming up versus Chelsea and then of course the Goodison Park you know the derby at Goodison Park as well was due oh, to take that place game is, that game is cursed isn't it that oh, it oh, is my cursed word. and you know it's for me as well because I'd have had the opportunity to to like be in the tunnel at Goodison be about and Zed Cut like as a part of it as opposed to being in the stands and you know so and the girls would all laugh at me and the staff because they were like you you were more gutted than us when the game was cancelled <laughs> I was like I know um, so yeah, it, and, and of course the girls are having a really a blinder of a season as well. So um, in terms of that, yeah, massively frustrating. And I know the girls are missing each other, and yeah, they're, they're trying to get the training in as best they can. A lot of them have had gym, gym equipment sent out to them, um, going to the parks where it's safe to do so, and things like that. But yeah, just missing that camaraderie and the banter, as you know, like in football, it's it it is like a lot of banter and giving each other stick yeah. and having a laugh with each other and. I think they're all missing that. Um, I wanted to be honest, have a look at doing some content maybe remotely with them as well and having a chat and maybe just trying to have a, have a laugh and get a few of them because I know they're tagging each other in posts, you know, the little challenges yeah. and stuff going around and I guess that's their way of kind of still having that interaction. But um, yeah, very strange to, to be, for them particularly, being in Finch Farm every day together in that environment and now being um, isolated. It must be strange, but no, I was having a laugh at a video I saw someone of Don going, I'm sick of seeing these celebrities going on about, oh, we're all in this together. It was only a, like, a, 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 <laughs> it's like, you're there with your house with 80 bedrooms, six women, like, you've got to laugh. But, um, yeah. you know, obviously there are some people that are proper cramped up and I, I really feel for them. Um, but yeah, everybody's missing it. Um it's just it's just very strange to get used to it. It feels like Groundhog Day, doesn't it? But you know, this will this will come to an end at some point. Um sooner rather than later, as I keep saying. Yeah. The the girls have been doing some good stuff with the club as well. Um, I enjoyed Simone uh, mostly Simone McGill's bedtime story. Yeah. <laughs> Probably been my favourite one they put out so far. Yeah, you know Simone as well. I know you've you've mm. spoken uh, to some of the girls and stuff and she is just so funny and a real credit to the club as well. 
um they'll do ev everything and anything they can to to try and help people through these times and a couple of the calls from uh dan turner and simone as well to yeah. a couple of the girls from the disability football team was was really lovely to see and you know the, the way the first team as well staff everyone involved with the club has been fantastic Evan, in the community as ever as well and donating food from i think food that was going to be used at finch farm has been going to to people across liverpool um who might be be going without so yeah the club as ever off the pitch you know yeah. it's sticking to that that motto nil sat is nissi optimum and um yeah i'm grateful to everton for, for all that stuff because i do go on the website now and or on twitter and see the little things every day and they're making me smile. Even Richarlison yeah. washing his hands, singing his song, and Gomez <laughs> doing the uh, castaway thing. You yeah. know, like, it's just nice, just little daft things like that. And we're all in it together. Um, for those who didn't see, I know I'm rambling, Matt. I'm sorry. This no, is probably the longest brew of blue you've done. But <laughs> no, the, no. We had, Sarah, we had Rob Vera on last week. It was nearly half an hour. Oh, just, well, Rob's you know what, my what, canary in the yeah. mine. <laughs> 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 Love you, Rob. Miss you, man. Hope you're doing well. Um, but the, the castaway video with, with Gomez, it really tickled me because he's going, uh, you know, Wilson, I just come back. I had four months out injured. And then this happens, and I like, and he, he's t doing it about himself, and it's all, it's good to see that he, you know, he's got a good sense of humour about everything as well, and, and no doubt most uh, straight female Evertonians falling more in love with him by the second. <laughs> <laughs> lots of plenty of straight males as well, so I'll tell I you that. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, let's, have a, let's have a chat about your shirt you've got on. Um, absolutely love that one. You've had it, you had it for a while, haven't you? That one. Um, can you just stand up so people can see it? They yes, just, I will get just, on this. So it's it's the ninety-five away kit. Yeah, that is the, the the zip on it. What's that about? The zip. Yeah. Oh, this here. Oh, is it a zip or? It's the little button collar. Uh, you know, I've, I've gone for a button yeah. up today. I'm doing a bit of a uh, Tom Davis. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there we go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love this strip. I love it. When they did, um, when I saw it, I, I have had it for probably a season and a bit now, but because Umbro were doing the kits at the moment, they brought them back, didn't they? And I was like, I'm getting straight on that one. Love it. Konchelskis era. That was, that was literally what I was going to say. I was going to ask you which player makes, do you think of when you see that shirt? It's Andre Konchelskis. Was it the, the hat-trick at Sheffield Wednesday? when we That's wore... it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing that springs to mind when you see this shirt. It's just mad, isn't it, how every shirt has an instant, like... Yeah. You've, you've been posting stuff like that, and um, every kit you see, you instantly have a player in mind. You think the blue with the little white collar, Timmy Kale, and... Yeah, you know, the big so one, on. yeah. Yeah, those were the days. Those were the days. 15 I've... years ago, that you know, you shared that thing, um, Vaughny's goal against Palace. Yeah. 15 years. Insane, isn't it? Crazy, mate. Absolutely crazy. I couldn't get over that. I'd have been 12. What the hell? <laughs> I'm not going to say how old I was. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I've got to say, obviously, like you know, people can see the John Stones uh, shirt over your shoulder there. And there's other ones in yours. Have you been slightly getting them off the frames and trying them all on? Ah, uh, do you know what, mate? I would. I, I, that's that's given me an idea. Actually, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't. I haven't got them out yet. But uh, it made me laugh because one of our one of our girls uh, messaged me and said, do, "Do you want like? Do you want all my old gear from last season?" Like, I was like, "Yeah, of course I do." I said, "I'm a blue, aren't I?" So I just get yeah. them out in it. So I get it. I get all them hand me downs anyway. But no, I might have to. Uh, I might have to get into into some of these shirts, and there is actually a Konchelskis one of this shirt on the wall. So maybe maybe I'll get that one out later. Just, and, uh, just, swap, and just swap them, and no one no one will ever know. No one will ever know. Get signed Andre one, yeah. No one will ever know. Just in Biro seventeen Konchelskis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure people will be so excited to go back to the match uh, when they all come in on that first game. No one will notice. It'll be fine. Oh, no one's asked. Well, there, it's fine. Although you, you just told everyone on this video, but you know, we can edit yeah. that out. Might, might, might just cut that bit out at the end so no one gets onto your master plan. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I've not took over the world yet, mate. I've not got the, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> everything's on video, everything's on video, everything's on camera. <laughs> um, Sarah, it's been a pleasure, absolutely love chatting to you. Um, 
Glad you're doing well. Um, I'm, we'll speak to you more here on, on the Blue Room over, over the lockdown, no doubt. Definitely, mate. As you can see, you put a massive smile on my face. You put me in a good mood for the day. So nice one for that. And happy Easter to everyone as well. Absolutely. And um, this is, like I said, this is the first of our Brewer Blue this week. Uh, we've had Sarah today. I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. I've got Laura Gates tomorrow. We've got Zuzu coming up later in the week as well. She's coming on on Friday. So uh, looking forward to speaking to her about all things music and toffees as well. Um, I think I'm getting this right at last. Subscribe here. I think it's the, <laughs> I've been pointing to the wrong side all the time. So, uh, just YouTube stuff. But uh, share, comment, like, do, do all those YouTube things for us. Uh, hopefully, get this as many people as possible. Um, thanks very much, and we'll speak to you again soon.